Good evening, Natasha. Good evening. How do you know what my name is? Here you are. Just as I imagined you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am your husband. My husband? Yes. You mean I am married? Yes. How charming. I had a suspicion that I am married. I have a good intuition, you know. Why, why stand here in the doorway? Come on in. Behind my back, everybody calls me an old maid. But I've had an inkling that I'm married. Mother, my husband is here. You... You live with your mother? Mother died long ago. I live alone. But you just talk to your mother. I do it all the time. Don't pay attention. I always talk to her. She died. But I feel her constant presence. Turn on the lights, please. I'd like to get a good look at you. See what your face looks like. Yeah. Take off your hat, would you please? What beautiful blue eyes you have. A marvelous, Socratic forehead. <laughs> you are lovely. I'm pleased. I wouldn't want a beauty anyway. All beautiful women have the same facial features, but few of them are memorable. There is nothing more tedious than a pretty face with everything in place. How old are you, by the way? Aren't you ashamed to ask me that, <laughs> by the way? You and I are intimates. The usual conventions don't apply. What do we care about propriety or impropriety? After all, we have been through in ten long years together. What have we been through? When I had done in testing ailments, you carried my specimens to the hospital for tests in your purse, while I was writhing spasmodically in pain on the floor. You were with me the whole time, from the first time I to my final return to power. I was 37 on this third. Turn around for me, please. And back again. Lift up your hair. Mm, you have a long neck. It's beautiful. And show me a little neck. Mm. Your feet are so delicate. Did we marry in a church? Yes. 
And did we have a civil service? Yes. Was it a big one? Not all that big, but it was an awful lot of fun. Did I marry you? For love? Or for money? For love. <laughs> when we married, I was a struggling musician. You a musician? No. Yeah. How charming! We have you. Oh, of course. <laughs> what do you play? The trumpet. The trumpet? Yeah. And when I married you, did you have another source of income? No. The rent is due today. Do you have any money? You have no money at all? Not an ounce. You mean no money at all? <laughs> As on the first day of creation. Nobody had money in those days. Last summer, I lay on the beach, staring at the blue, blue sky. And I made a discovery. There is no money on the sun either. How on earth did I marry you? That I can't say. I must have been head over heels in love with you. I guess I must really, really love you. I must love you so much that I don't care how much money you have. Speak up, say something. Don't give it a second doubt. You absolutely adore me. Isn't it wonderful? And I'm sitting here like a fool all evening long, pitying myself for being so lonely and so wretched. But it seems I'm not lonely or wretched at all. It seems I am married and I have a husband, such a wonderful man. Tell me, please, only don't fudge. Tell me the truth. Have we been happy all these years? Depends on how you look at it. Sometimes yes, sometimes not so. I can't believe I would marry a poor musician. Not with all my love and my needs for luxurious life. Not with my parents who spoiled me as a girl because I was the one and only beloved daughter. And 
don't talk you with me. But I'm very happy. I love you more than life. Embrace me. We are the happiest people in the world. I want to argue that if it weren't for my love for you, I would have died of alcohol poisoning long ago, curled up somewhere under a fence in the ditch, choked to death on my own vomit like a mangy dog. What gives you such gruesome thoughts? Hmm. Because I am an incurable and irremediable drunk. How can I be happy with you if you were drunk? <laughs> In between my binges, happiness is quite within reach. I am absolutely a poor alcoholic. How can anyone possibly live under one roof with a drunk and with no money? When things get really bad, you go out and earn a bit. Aren't you full of nasty stories? I work? Horrors! Are you trying to drive me to tears? Oh, nonsense! You aren't scrubbing floors in the local hospital. You collect newspaper clippings on various topics. They deliver newspapers to you at home. You read them all, and then you cut out clippings with scissors. I see nothing tragic in that at all. The money isn't very good, but it's steady. Scissors. Scissors. We don't happen to have a child, do we? Of course we do. We have a child, and I know nothing about that. I felt like crying all evening long, and I've had no idea why. I didn't appear. I have a baby, a boy or a girl. A boy. Outside with the kids. I am married. I have a child. And I remember nothing about being pregnant. I don't remember carrying him in my womb. I don't remember giving birth.
then where is he? He took his ball and left. Will he be home soon? He will when he gets hungry. What choice will he have? He'll tie himself out and will come running to get something to eat. How oh, Jenny? And I'm sitting here, all alone, sticking pins into my heart. And I'm so miserable and so depressed. What about a little girl? Let's have a girl, just one little girl. We have a girl. I have a girl? Then, where is she? She's very independent. Goes out quietly without saying anything. I don't know where she is. How old is she? Nine. Then, let's have another girl. Then we'll have two boys and two girls. We have another girl. A second daughter? Her older sister took her out. You mean... I have four children? Yes, four. How charming. And here I thought I wasted my life stupidly. On pointless affairs and other nonsense. Now I find out I have a husband, a boy, a girl, a girl, and another boy. I'm the happiest person in the world. Finally! <laughs> Every day for the last 10 years I've been explaining to you that you are the happiest woman in the world. But you don't believe me. Sometimes I think you just pretend not to believe it in order to spite me. Your complaints about life and your stubbornness simply drive me mad. How could I have not understood it before? Like two plus two. But you couldn't. You're always bitching and moaning. There's no money. Our apartment's too small. The kids are screaming. I'm playing the trumpet. And then the oldest girl brought home a stray dog. The dog barks. The kids howl. I play the trumpet. None of us let you live your life. And I am sitting here in the most horrible and repulsive silence. It's like a grave. Now I find it's not silent at all. On the contrary, the kids are howling, the dog is barking, my husband is playing on the trumpet. It's a whole other story. I'm very happy. Are you happy? Yes, I'm very happy. You're happy. Thanks, God. Don't I happen to have any diamonds? Not even a little one? Are you kidding? How? You have two dresses, one for every day and another for going out. Why don't my parents help us with the little money? They have both been dead for ages. I keep forgetting. 
I think real life. I can't get used to the idea that they are dead. Try a string on your finger when they are memory. My children will come to me now. My own children. Of course they will. They've got no place else to go. I'm anxious. I'm very anxious. I've got to spruce myself up. I'll go and change and put my best dress on. What time is it now? 7.30. So late? And they're not home yet. I'm dying of tenderness. Mm -hmm. I feel so much love for them. I want to hold them and kiss them. What should I say to them? I need to say something special to them today. Something they will remember for their entire life. What should I say to them? I don't know. What do I usually... What do I usually say to them when they come home? Well... You say... You little bastards, where have you been running around? God damn you. Do you want me to go out of my mind? Where in the hell have you been, you little degenerates? That's impossible. So I would say that to my children? But that's what you say, word for word. You don't only yell at them, you whip them. I whip my own children? You do. The boys really get it. I can't believe it, that I would hit a child. You beat your husband too. I beat the man I love. You are lying, sir. That's what I'll tell you. You are a downright dirty rotten liar. How dare you? Who do you think I am? I don't have habits like this to prove right with might. My father was a famous diplomat. I have two governesses. I know four European languages. I believe in the power of words. <laughs> I abhor violence. Mm. Violence can never achieve anything. Only patience, mm -hmm. attention, mm -hmm. and love. You beat your kids and you beat your husband. It's a lie. It's the truth. It's not true. I am telling you, you do. It's a lie. I don't hit anyone. I don't hit my husband. I love you. I don't hit my kids. Do I don't think oh, I my kids. I love you. Bound by love, then 
What am I suffering for? You have never been unfaithful to me, have you? Never. Swear it. If you cheat on me, if you say you love me, but you really don't, then my life is absolutely pointless. Then I don't want to leave. And I won't. That's not true. It's not pointless even if I don't love you. Because you have your children. Yes. I forgot. I have my children. Don't ever forget about that. You must remember that above all things. I was so happy to see you. And now I realize what a catastrophe. Would you like me to play you something? Yes, please. When I listen to the music, I forget about everything in the world. I'll raise your spirits. drunkard, either. Look at your well-groomed face. So what? You aren't my husband. That's what. You're right. I am mistaken. I've confused myself for someone else. Would you please leave now? Uh, wait a minute. Then uh, who am I? As if you don't know yourself. I swear to God I don't! Get out of my house. Please, don't chase me out. Go. It's fine for you in your own home. You're a mother. You know what you have to do. You wait for your children to come home. You feed them and put them to bed. I don't know who I am. Who am I? 
I don't know where to go or what to do. But every person must go somewhere and do something. But it's like I have amnesia. Who am I really? You really don't know? I don't even remember my name. Where did this miserable me come from? Try to remember something. Anything. If only I had... If only I had some papers of some kind. That's not it. That's... Ah. Maybe. Where did I get all this money? You asking me? What? What if it happens? Oh God! What if I'm an inveterate thug? Huh? Could well be. Huh? I knew one person who considered himself quite proper. But he turned out to be a downright ass and kill. It was a big discovery for his family and for us, his friends. But it was a big surprise for himself. He lived a marvelous life. And then, one day, in his waning years, he seduced a little girl. That evening, he threw himself out of the window. I can't be left alone. I'm afraid I'm like your friend and that I know nothing about myself. And then, that when I learn the truth about me, I do something horrible to myself. But I don't even know as much as your friend. It must be, it must be much better to be a low down snake than not to know you're a low down snake. Quit complaining. Get hold of yourself and try to remember something. Any little thing. I... I had a father. He had a big car that was always breaking down. And one day, he let me steer. I was so happy. What more could a snotty kid hope for? Go on. Go on. Exercise those memory muscles. Uh, I, I remember. I remember how, how my mother washed laundry in the river. And when it was all white and clean, it fell in and started floating downstream. I chased after it on the bank until it went on there. What else? I know. I got a real bad cut when I was a kid. And none of the grown-ups could stop the bleeding. I feel I'm losing consciousness. And I think, am I really going to die? Is this really happening to me? Am I really... 
Am I really dying? Same thing happened when I was a teenager. The first time I was with a girl. She was kneeling down with her back to me and I was thinking, am I really a real man now? Is this really happening to me? So, and what happened? Did you become a real man? Or somebody else did? I used to think I did, but now I don't know. I don't know anything anymore. What if we what if it wasn't me who was happy and it wasn't me who became a real man? And all of all of that happened to someone else. What if I just read about it somewhere? Where could you have read about it? In a novel. What novel? Oh. I read a ton when I was a kid. My head became such a mess from all that indiscriminate reading. So? Are you a real man yet? Maybe not. Makes sense. It makes no sense at all! What makes sense? Absolutely nothing makes sense! Like you, I have every reason to be concerned and alarmed. I don't know who you are either. Moreover, I don't know what you are doing here. My children will come home soon and I have a stranger in my house. I want to make sense of this a hundred times more than you. After all, it concerns me and my life, which at the moment is a total enigma to me. Who do I look like? What do you think? I'm not a good judge of people. You don't look like a virgin. <laughs> you look a little like a waiter. Or a hairdresser. You stink of sweet eau de cologne. Yes. You are either a waiter or a hairdresser. Or a pimp. Or maybe a dentist. like another orphan. I have no one in the world but you. Don't worry about that. It happened to me once. My girlfriend and I went to the seashore. I wake up in the morning absolutely convinced that I'm in my apartment back home in the city. I get up and I start looking for a closet. Couldn't find it. Then I start looking for my mom. Can't find her either. Then I started looking for my dad. Couldn't find him either. So I fell into my pillow 
and burst into tears. That's when I understood that I was not home, that I was on vacation at the seashore with my girlfriend. God, how I laughed. How I laughed. I don't think that's funny. God, how I laughed. I don't know who I am, what my purpose is, and what I'm doing. But I know one thing, that I love you. Maybe I don't remember a damn thing, but I can feel what I feel. I would ask you to never talk to me like that. I love you. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just think that you do. Feelings cannot be imagined. Yes, they can. That's horrible. The only thing I can get my two hands on is what I feel, see, hear and sense right now. You think it can be imagined? You mean nothing like this ever happened to you? Yes, it did. I fell in love with a girl once, but I loved her from afar. I was afraid to approach her and talk to her. I was going out of my mind. But, I, but when I finally met her, when I went up to her and talked to her, I realized I didn't love her at all. I had invented all of her qualities and charms. I fell under the spell of charms that didn't exist. Then, you see? But with you, it's all different. I'm filled with love for you. You're filled with love, but it might well happen that the love you're filled with is not for me. Impossible. When I was a girl, I fell in love with one guy. But when another man ended up next to me, I began loving him with the love that I felt for the first guy. Then, one day I made a mistake. I called the second guy that I was deceiving myself with. By the name of the first guy, whom I really loved. That's how I was unmasked. But I'm not deceiving myself. It's really you I love. What a strange face you have. You know, I have really seen you somewhere before. Think, where and when could it have been? I was sitting like this, on a chair, next to a table, like this, and I was holding a pair of scissors, and I was cutting clippings out of a newspaper, and then your face flashed in front of me. 
I saw your face in the newspaper. A newspaper? Yes, the newspaper. What newspaper? I don't remember. Well, let's look. There's one on the table. What if I am famous? Might well be. If only someone wrote about me in a newspaper and put my photo next to the article. I wouldn't suffer so much about who I am and what I'm doing. Everything would snap into place. Looks like me. What do you think? No resemblance. Too bad. And what about this one? Not this one either. Look. Similar, but it's not you. How great to be famous. Then I'd understand right away who I am and why I am living in this big wide world. Look, I found you. I found you, that's you. That's me? That's you. Me? <laughs> it is. And what's that written here under the photo? Wait a minute. It's written here that... You are a thug and a murderer. That you killed your friend, a prominent banker. Who was also a thug, by the way. He ran away with the depositor's money. You shot him in the head three times. And then you ran away from the scene of the crime with the money. And you were wearing a black coat and a hat. My God, I had the feeling I was a low, dumb, dirty scoundrel. I've suspected it ever since I was a kid. What else? That you were head security man at the bank? And when the bank director disappeared with the money, you disappeared with him. And here's your name. You want me to tell what your name is? Your name N is... No! No! I don't want to know. I don't care what my name is anymore. I won't need it any longer. What have you done? You killed a man. I didn't kill anybody. But it's written here, in black and white, that you did. Trust me, I didn't kill anyone. He... He was the one who opened the safe in my presence. And I... I saw money. Tons of it. Something weird happened. I pulled out my pistol and shot three times. Huh. I didn't want to. It was like it happened on its own, beyond my will. He was my best friend. He lay on the floor bleeding. I looked at him and thought, did I really do this? Uh. What have you done?
hasn't anything like that ever happened to you? Well, yes. Five years ago, almost the same thing happened to me. My girlfriend started teasing me. And she made me so mad that I slapped her. We haven't seen each other ever since. To this day, I can't believe that I hit her. That's how I lost my best friend. And I had, I lost the only one I had. on the Baltic Sea where I can take a rubber raft to Sweden. From Sweden I'll go to Denmark. I've got some friends there who can get me a new passport. I'll be fine with all this money. Pour me some wine. That's the last thing that you need. Why? I got so drunk last Friday that I trashed my own apartment. I started out smashing dishes and ripped up my clothes. I got so Sick of everything. So sick of this goddamn kids, of this drunk husband of mine. Then I sat on a chair and I fell asleep. When I woke up, I looked around. And I thought. Who is the asshole that tore my apartment to shreds? You're right. I better not drink. Now you know who you are what to do and where to go. Get going. I'm not going anywhere alone. Go. You go with me. I will get you out of this damn hole. We'll buy an apartment in Paris and a house in America. We'll become someone else entirely in other countries. Why do you need me? 
you can find a girlfriend who is younger and prettier than me. Look what the life has done to me. Look at my hands, they all ripped me. I'll have you swimming in luxury after a couple of months of happy, carefree living. You won't recognize yourself. One fine day, you go up to the mirror and you'll say, God, look how I've changed. Look how pretty I am. I can't believe my own eyes. Is this really me? You're absolutely right. Of course I'm right. But I don't know you at all. We've just met half an hour ago. I myself don't know who I am. How are you supposed to know? I've lived my whole life with the sensation that I'm blessed with true and bounteous talent. I can sense in myself a profusion of positive and creative powers. But I still haven't figured out what my talent is and what it's good for. I think I could be a real artist. I draw pretty good. Who knows? Maybe I am a Pissarro or a Monet. I'll paint from morning till night every day. I'll paint like mad. You? You Pissarro? Maybe. But I can't go with you. I have four children. My lord, but you have already given them the gift of life. Do you really think they won't be grateful enough to free you from what binds you? If they love you, they'll understand. You'll see. We'll leave them some money. They love me, but I do not love you. How do you know if you love me or not? I feel what I feel. I don't love you. A woman I know married an aristocrat and lived with him for 25 years without loving him. But when he died, she went up to the casket and kissed his forehead and right then, she realized that this was the only man she had loved in her life. Love has a reverse effect. Twenty-five years will pass and it may turn out that you never loved anyone like you loved me at this very moment. You just don't know that. I don't know. You don't know. I hate my life. I have long suspected that I am living someone else's life. Oh, well, that's that's marvelous. You're right. I'll go with you. Get dressed. Time's wasting. Like a pleasant, pleasant person. A 
appearances can be so deceptive. It's an old coat, but it will do. Button up my buttons and I'll do yours. What if the rough turns over? I can't swim. You don't have to. If the rough turns over, we die from the cold. But don't, don't worry. I promise you a pleasant journey with, all, with no surprises. We'll cast up from shore, quietly, used under the cover of night, using oars. We'll turn the, the motor on later. I'm afraid. I feel terrified. And I don't know why. I also feel excited. You, you are not alone. I also feel so uplifted. Mamma mia. Is it really happening to me? I can't believe it. Mother dear. Let's go. You'll have a plenty of time then to talk to your mother. Wait a minute. What are you looking for? It's freezing cold outside. I can't find my gloves. Think, where did you leave them last? Look on the table. They're not on the table. Under the mirror. Don't see anything. Where could I have put them? <laughs> you are wearing them. You just said that you don't love me. Me? 
You. I didn't. That's not true. How could I have said that when I do love you? What's to love about me when I'm an irredeemable scoundrel? You're not a scoundrel. Then who am I? You're not a drunk? And you're not a murderer? You... You're my husband. You're an honest and decent man. And get that into your head. Put a string on your finger. Are you sure about that? Absolutely. Swear? I swear. Here I thought I was an irredeemable scoundrel, but actually I'm a decent man. What do you say about that? Doesn't that make me a jerk? Don't you dare. Don't you dare to talk about yourself like this. You are smart. You are a man of uncommon intellect and broad interests. And these are not my words. Everybody says this. Everybody knows it. You just don't know what a fine man you are. Tell me. You are happy and kind. You are always happy to help. You are industrious. You went all of this. With your honest labor. You adore your kids. And your kids worship you. Every day they wait for you to come home. And they leap into your arms. Mm. Amazing. Today I'm walking down the street. And I am haunted by horrible thoughts. I wanted to hang myself. I am going alone and I am thinking, what a beast you are. I am a beast. I don't love anyone. No one loves me. In actual fact, I love everybody and everybody loves me. I'm smart and it seems that I have children who love to leap into my arms. But that's not the main thing. The main thing is that my wife loves me. What a discovery. Yes, I love you. What have I done to deserve such a norm? You are such a remarkable husband. You are so attentive and tender, so loyal and so faithful. Faithful? Yes, faithful. I was just walking across the bridge trying to remember what the slot looked like that I met last, last night at the station. I couldn't remember and it had only been a half hour since I left here. And I was thinking, how, how many women like that have there been in my life whose faces I'll never remember? Two hundred there, then. Give or take a few. And now, here's the deal. I've never had anyone but you. Never happened. Oh, really? Cross my heart. Don't lie to me. I won't lie. All right. Let me look into your eyes. You do it. For this long ten years, you have not even once cheated on me. 
swear on it. I swear that you have never ever cheated on me. Swear by what? By everything. By what everything? By everything there is. And how many years have we been together? Ten. And I never cheated on you even once. Never. Why did I not even want to cheat on you? What do you think? Because you love me so much. I love you? Yes, you love me mad. Deeply, passionately. Alright, alright. Let's say I'm your husband. It's entirely possible that I am a decent and honest man and that I'm not a low down drunk and murderer. But the notion that I never once cheated on my wife? You can kill me if you want, but I'll never believe that. I don't care if I love you more than life if you're a stunning beauty. But why, sweetheart, why? Uh, I don't know. That's not an answer. Because otherwise I would come out this absolutely ideal person and there is no such thing. Not ideal? Just normal and common? Normal? What do you mean normal? I don't drink, my wife loves me, my kids leap into my arms. On top of that, I am as smart as a rocket scientist. There's something unnatural about all this. No, there isn't. Then tell me please, do I have at least some flaws? Just one little flaw. No. I, I beg your pardon, but you, you're confusing me with someone else. This cannot be like that. No, I'm not. You are my husband. The minute I saw you, I said to myself, here he is, my husband. But I am flesh and blood. I must have some weaknesses. Maybe you do, but nothing in the world will make me say what they are. Say? No. Why? You don't want to know. I want to know. I'm not saying. Then goodbye. I'm leaving. Uh, if you really want to know, then there is a little something. Cocaine? No. Gambling? No. Boys. Aren't you ashamed? I catch pigeons and rip off their heads with my bare hands. No. I collect pornographic postcards. That's awful. Horse races. Never. I I love to eat excessively. Well, come on. Post the steps. That's your weakness. You collect post the steps. That's all? It's enough for you to see a man a mean step as your eyes start rolling. Your hands start shaking. You completely lose the touch with the reality. Saliva starts dripping out of your mouth and you rush off to the cash register. <laughs> mm. It looks so slick and easy. Kids all fed, dressed and happy. You're a beauty and you even have a dainty feet. 
I am just a dream, kind and decent. And we love each other more every day. That's pathetic. I'm telling you, pathetic. What's so pathetic about it? Look. Look at how people live. That's not life they're living. That's delirium tremens. Times are tough. Life is hard. Families fall apart. There are no moral values. Children grow up on the street. But everything between you and me is perfect. How can we look people in the eye? What will people say about us? Everybody lives badly. We are rolling in clover. I don't care what other people say. I can't believe we don't have any problems. It doesn't happen like that. Of course we do. Ah, your parents hate me. They respect you greatly. You are dying to find a passionate lover. You want to fall in love and be swept off your feet. Don't deny it. No. You are sick of wiping your kids' snotty noses and picking up after your husband. You are so silly. You... Quit tormenting me. Fess up. Okay. If you insist. But promise you wouldn't tell anyone. I'll take your secret to my grave. If you look at my right hand. What do you see? What? All my fingers are straight. It's only a little pinky that sticks out. I sprained it when I was six. It stayed like this my whole life. That's all? That's not enough for you? Then... Everything really is all right? I never killed anyone. No. But I do look like that guy in the newspaper. Not even close. And I don't have to flee in the freezing rain? No. And I'm your husband? Yes. You are my husband. You are smart and charming. Tell me please, do I really love you? Yes, you do. Please, turn on the lights. Let me look at you properly. My pleasure. It's really quite possible that I do love you very much. Please turn around back to me. And another half turn. Absolutely splendid. So, I'm your husband, am I? Yes, you are. Wait a second, are you absolutely sure? Absolutely. Did we marry in church? 
Yes. And did we have a civil service? Yes. Was it a big one? Not that big, but it was very joyful. My lord, what a happiness. I'm walking down the street, staggering from side to side, depressed and out of my mind. There's filth everywhere, everything stinks and it's freezing cold. I see people on the street, I look at their faces, and their eyes are filled with despair. Such unhappy people. It makes my blood run cold. Who the hell needs a life like that? I might as well go and hang myself. But in fact, everything is fine. Everything is great. My family is waiting for me at home. They love me. And now, stars in my eyes because someone loves me that's why and they can't wait for me to come home is that right absolutely i refuse to believe that is this really happening to me wait a minute i don't want to wait they'll be here any minute who They'll be here any minute. Quick. Look at yourself. What a mess. Go, wash up, shave, and comb your up your hair. Go and change my dress. What should we say to them when they come and home? I'll have to think about that. I'll tell them to go and wash their hands straight away. What, uh, what should I say? You say? What? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. You don't say anything. You just sit and be silent. But, but, uh, then what? We'll play by ear. I'll pretend that I'm reading a newspaper, okay? something I wanted to tell you. 
but what is this? What did I want to tell you?